Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Tony Ionelli, President and CEO of the Greater Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. Tony has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, Tony, for joining us it's today. It's my pleasure to be here. So the Chamber of Commerce has a really great history here. And you've been with the Chamber of Commerce for quite a while. Talk about the Chamber of Commerce as it has evolved from your earliest times here. Yeah, I think our biggest story in this community has been regionalizing, and that's probably been our uh, biggest story also in terms of bringing the major cities together. At one point, we were 21 different chambers of commerce. Now we've all come together to form uh, what is about the sixth largest chamber in the country. So it's been about forming partnerships and uh, building a regional chamber that has some clout some influence rather than working individually. How many members do you have today? Well, we're close to, we're over 5,000 members. So uh, it's been a great run. I think when I first came here, we were about six or 700 uh, members. So we've had a lot of growth. And, uh, and again, a, a mar much larger geographic range than I ever dreamed we would have. But, uh, but it's been fun and a lot of great businesses in this community. And it's been fun to uh, see the impact and the growth. We sort of hit that right place at the right time. Where we've had a good, economic growth, but as well as quality of life at the same time, which has been great. One of the things that I find to be very interesting is that sometimes with consolidation, you end up paying the price in terms of generis, becoming generic. Yes. Talk about how you, how you have actually approached that to prevent yourself from becoming sort of generic and bland yeah. and blah. That's a great question. And the, and the reason I think is we're a very bottom up approach and it's been very clear. We've been totally committed to the fact that we're seldom with this large organization, a top down edict. So each community, if you take Hellertown, Lower Saucon Chamber, they set their agenda. We facilitate it. Or you take the Bethlehem Chamber, they set the agenda. We facilitate it. So we've always been committed to not be generic. At one point they were talking about uh, unified logos and so on. And I mean, I think you need look, we have a the chamber is our brand and people know that brand, but individually it's really important for communities to hang on to what their agenda is. And I think one of the big things with Chambers of Commerce today, we say we're as much a chamber of communities as we are a chamber of commerce. The world has changed and uh, you have to be committed to communities and their main streets all across the valley. And uh, it seems also that what you're doing, the approach that you're taking is to provide sort of common infrastructure um, some some um, rational basis for uh, cooperation and operational efficiency while you're also having each of those chambers representing the interests of each of those communities within the overall chamber, but then being able to take the entire Lehigh Valley in a unified way mm -hmm. and bring political clout. Yeah, in a sense, when we need the power, we, we can call it, uh, we can call it in. And that is, again, with the amount of members and our regional uh, of a grasp uh, all across the valley. So it's a good point. It, I think when we need the smaller organization in an individual community on their main street, that's important. When we need the large organization, as you said, for say political clout or maybe purchasing plans, those kinds of things. Uh, so it's, it's been a good mix. And there are subgroups as well, right? You have services that are provided to communities of color. You mm -hmm. have uh, services. So it's not just geography. It's, it's women. It's uh, members of the LGBT business community mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, we've had three main mantras, mantras in the time that I've been here. So the first was the power of partnerships. That was about bringing everyone together. The second was on every main street. So big, but focused on every main street. So we're not so big that we can't talk about that bottom-up approach that you mentioned. And then lastly, we go into the 21st century chamber. So our rep represented in the African-American community, Hispanic community, LGBT community, uh, women in business. So is, does everyone feel a part of this economic pie and this, not only part of it, but do we have the, those communities in leadership? And that's what we're really committed to, to be in leadership of the chamber. So talk about the Lehigh Valley uh, economic picture. Um, that is also another very fascinating um, aspect. You had uh, this being uh, a center of heavy manufacturing, mm -hmm. um, and then of course the the uh, the issues with with manufacturing jobs fleeing this this uh, this area, and now uh, 20, 30 years of diversification, initially really hard scrabble uh, work. Uh, trying to rebuild the the economic base of the community. Yeah, maybe one of the benefits, you know, one of the negative is about being here my entire life is maybe you miss some of the exposure to the universe, although I've had a lot of international travel. But 
I think what I've seen is the up the roller coaster of this community. And it has been a roller coaster. It's it, it's now really, I mean, you you just see the vitality in the community. There's still work to be done. There mm -hmm. will always be work to be done. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this community has really hung tough. Yeah, if you if we were a person, I can remember when we were kind of filled with ourselves, and I can remember kind of that's me. You know, have my there's <laughs> times when things have been wonderful, right. and you're down like anybody's life cycle and came back up. And I think we do owe a lot to ourselves to hang in, as you just mentioned, and we came back. And in a way that, I, I have to say, in a way I never thought, not only came back from an economic standpoint, but again, from the quality of life with the, uh, with the um, baseball park that we have, Coca-Cola Park, a PPL center. Uh, so these really regional uh, venues now that are bringing in concerts and entertainment and really improving the quality of life, at least on the entertainment side, but we still have hung on to our parks and so on. So. You know, every community loves what they, you know, what they're, who they are, what they're doing. But it's been a good run, and I think the biggest thing is within this growth not to lose some of that quality of life. In terms of the the uh, business architecture here in the Lehigh Valley, uh, talk about where the dominance uh, is in terms of sectors. Well, we we really are very strong. Almost ninety four percent of our membership are small business, what we mm -hmm. call a smaller business. So we've had a good mix. We do have the the giants, you know, the air products and the hospitals who participated, uh, not only in providing great health care but also a huge employment base. So health care is is, yes. is big. Um, yeah. Manufacturing is yes. still big. Manufacturing is moving. But it has a different char character. It's now no longer top down Bethlehem Steel and so on and so yeah. forth but you have smaller manufacturers as well as uh, regional um, uh, centers of manufacturing for larger corporations. Yeah, my, my first job, I worked at Mack Truck on the assembly line, putting tires on trucks. So I remember that whole manufacturing universe and how different it is today. And, and, and that's another thing relative to education. And that is that uh, we really need to educate this workforce and in the areas where there's a job demand, I, I think one of the biggest things I hear right now is we need good people. We need good people. So we have a very good partnership with the Workforce Board, uh, marriage there where we're helping, we're the conduit to business and them uh, to employees. So uh, that's an important piece, as is our tourism piece and our economic development piece. How do you see the, the uh, pipeline from high school into community college, into higher education as fulfilling the needs of businesses here in, in the Lehigh Valley. Do you feel like uh, things are coming along well? Yeah, I think we can get better at that. I think that's an area that's moving, you know, these job shifts are moving very rapidly and to sort of keep up with that, I think is important. You know, we hear a lot more recently about not to poo poo, obviously a four year degree, but people that are going to a four year program and coming out with uh, not the skills needed maybe for, for what the job uh, or the and workforce. And the cost being very high sometimes exactly. in proportion to the benefit that, that, that a young person gets in terms of their own ability to Absolutely. Watch. So now trade schools and the like are really a, a good alternative. So we're retrofitting and working with the Workforce Board to find out what an economic development corporation, what are the, you know, it used to be that you would bring people to the valley or anywhere and then the jobs would follow. Now today it's almost, do you have the, can you fulfill the jobs needed then they'll come. And is there a diverse workforce also? I think that's important. I think uh, businesses want to see what, whether or not this is an inclusive community. So that's important to us. And you don't get educated once anymore. You have to get yeah. educated and then re-educate and re-educate because things are moving so, so rapidly. So mm -hmm. that whole idea of the interaction between businesses, particularly small businesses, which are the driver of, of employment, and the preparation for employment, whether you have had a job for five years and are requiring some sort of retraining because the technology that you're working with, whether it's in a hospital or uh, whether you're, you, you're in the manufacturing side, that technology moves so incredibly quickly. Yeah. And I think every business, any organization, profit, nonprofit, you better be ready to reinvent yourself almost on a yearly basis, or the market will pass you by. It's so different. You, know, you used to be able to have a five, a 10 year plan. And uh, I kiddingly say we work on like a three month plan. That's about the, the maximum because it, the world moves so fast and how people establish value and invest in you. You know, Chambers used to be about, you want to join, give me a membership. We, we've, when I first got here, 80% of our money was dues, 20% non-dues. We've totally inverted that. 80% is non-dues, 20% dues, because we've got to give people value. 
I mean, they think you're doing great things. Uh, I mean, that's what Chamber, the history of Chambers is, but you gotta bring value today and that's changed. In terms of the value that you bring to the community, you're not just about business, you're also about communal life. Talk about how the Chamber functions to improve the quality of life beyond sort of the, the, the pure business representation. Yeah, we've kind of uh, found this community development niche in a sense, and particularly in the smaller communities who don't have community development directors, economic development directors. So we've done a lot of, um, a lot of events uh, that, that will bring a city to life or a main street. And I'm talking about smaller communities, Northampton, as I mentioned, Hellertown, Emmaus. These are communities with a history and don't really have necessarily the, the infrastructure, and particularly our, our key staff people who can focus specifically on community development and economic development. So we try to fill that gap to bring main streets to life, uh, to keep communities vibrant. And uh, we're pretty fortunate in the Valley, I think, that people a lot of what we do involves volunteer leadership. So right. we go into a community and make sure we find people who are interested in the growth and the success and the future of that community. Talk about how your organization actually functions, how many people you have, how do you actually shape a, a highly functional chamber of commerce? Well, you're, you're hitting the nail right on the head because it is interesting how we do it. Uh, we're very bottom up, as I mentioned. Uh, we have 33 people without throughout the community, and I think we're a very my. St it's really I think this is your full time staff. Yes, yeah, 33 full time, and I think it mirrors my you know like most most organizations it mirror the CEO's personality. So I am not a very structured person. I don't have an office. I basically get in my car and go across this valley and beyond, making sure that uh, we were covered at events or maybe someone making sure a political. A person that we're dealing with in a smaller community, their mayor is happy. You know, our, our, wherever I can go to make sure that people are generally happy. And then I have a top tier, which we call the uh, well, seven top tier executive uh, VPs, and they're really driving, they really drive the agenda. So and you're basically doing a management by walking around, by circulating, I'm by staying in contact. Yes, yeah, and um, I'm sort of trying to make sure that in all the dynamics that if there's someone who feels that, you know, we've got a big world, maybe we need to be uh, more aggressive about something and supporting them. Uh, maybe there's a big event that they wanna have. Have we found sponsorship for that event? I mean, it sounds basic, but, the, but between the political and economic, it's, as you mentioned, it's a juggling a lot of human beings, which I love. I mean, it happens to be the, the one thing I'm good at and the one thing I love. So it's about people really. and. Uh, and the community is about people, so hanging on to it and, and making it better, uh, you know, every day. Tony Ionelli, thank you so much for sharing the experience of the Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce, and thank you so much for your insights. It's been my absolute pleasure.